This is a video I've been putting off making for quite a while. Uh, I want to give you all an update on my writing uh, journey. And I will admit the reason I've been putting off making it is I was desperately hoping that the next time I made a publishing vlog would be the one I'd get to tell you about the next step, the getting an agent part. And no, still haven't. So I uh, can't really talk about that. Uh, what I'll talk about instead is all the stuff I've been trying desperately instead. Uh, first, yes, I have been querying a project, uh, Shadow and Light, uh, a 106... Yeah, 106k word fantasy novel uh, featuring thieves, islands, boats, uh, <laughs> slight revolutionary feelings, uh, some police violence, you know, normal fantasy stuff. I sent 71 queries, I got 40 rejections, I did get one request for a full manuscript and immediately forgot that I got it because A, it's from the same person that requested my last book, uh, Bones of Stone, and they ghosted me after the request, like they never responded whatsoever. And uh, I wasn't brave enough to nudge them because I was afraid I'd sound rude, and I'm planning on actually nudging them this time. I think I have another month that I need to wait before I send them a nudge. Uh, but the other reason I wasn't super excited about it is that exact day I saw a post on social media about how a lot of agents nowadays are requesting full manuscripts that they have no intention of reading and they're just doing it basically as a way to hold their place in line because if you get an offer from an agent it is generally considered good practice to message all of the agents who have requested your full manuscript to tell them like hey I have an offer I'm gonna give you all a week to look over what you have and get back to me about whether you're also giving me an offer and uh, <laughs> and so basically this is a, their way of saying of making sure that they hear if another agent is interested and then they'll look at it and the more I think about it, the less I think this really makes a lot of sense. Like, I don't necessarily believe that this is true. But it got into my head and completely ruined any joy I had in getting that full request. Uh, also, uh, at this point, I still have, you know, 31 queries out there. And, like, a lot of them are old enough that at this point it's fair to say that they are rejections. Like, if it's been more than two months, it's usually safe to say that agent's not going to give me a positive response. But uh, some of them are still new enough that mm, I might hear something positive back at some point. Uh, but I shelved it back in July. I'm also not entirely sure I'm actually done querying this one because I was just in a very low point emotionally when I shelved it, and I still have plenty of agents on my list to query. And like, 71 queries sent for a mass market adult market fantasy? That's not that high. That's pretty low. So I might go ahead and try some more. Uh, there is at least one person that I've met on threads who directly said they sent more than 20, uh, more than 20, more than 200 queries for a mass market fantasy before they got any interest. Uh, but most of the people who say they sent a lot of queries and then get an agent also got a good number of requests along the way. And I have not gotten any other full requests or requests for pages. So like, I feel like there's something wrong with the query. And uh, I still go back to, I think there's something wrong with the query, not the book. I think the book is fine, but uh, I needed to at least take a step back, maybe come back to it, maybe not. Because there is another step that I've been taking. I have decided to give a little bit more interest into directly querying small presses and small publishers. And I will admit, this is one of those elements of getting published that just sort of flew under my radar for a while. I was under the impression that you had to have an agent to send your manuscript out, even to small presses and publishers. And then I found out in the last couple of years, basically, that no, a lot of small presses and publishers accept manuscripts without an agent. Now, uh, if you are sending it directly to them, you've sort of given up on your chance of getting an agent because a lot of agents will not accept a manuscript that has already been sent to any publishers because they're afraid that takes options off the table for them. But... uh. I think it is a possibility. I, I will also say, I th when I thought about, when I first found out about this and thought about like, oh, that's what I'll do. I was like, oh, this is gonna open up so many more possibilities. And it's less than I expected. Uh, partially because it's surprisingly hard to find small presses for a book. Like small presses tend to be very, very narrowly targeted. 
uh, like, there are not a lot of them that are like, we cover fantasy and sci-fi. It's usually like, okay, we cover fantasy and sci-fi, but specifically we're looking for fantasy books that are low fantasy in a rural setting featuring shapeshifters in the Midwest. And our sci-fi uh, needs to be space operas with uh, queer female leads. And it's like, oh, okay. And like, it is that level of specificity for a lot of them. Like, a lot of them will have a theme that they're really interested in, and we're like, we're only interested in super dark fantasy that features vampires, or uh, like, it will have a uh, general thesis that you have to match with them. Like, we are interested in these genres, but your book needs to talk about how uh, capitalism helps the world go round, or whatever random thing it is. And uh, while my book, I feel like, is great for, like, generalized fantasy audiences, a lot of these very narrow markets I know are not my market. So I'm like, this isn't gonna work. And also, like, I've shown y'all that if you're looking for agents, it's pretty damn easy to just go to Manuscript Wishlist, or to go to Query Tracker, or to go to uh, Agent Query and just enter search terms. And, like, you can do as broad as just, like, all the fantasy agents, and you'll get hundreds of them. But I've only really found one site that sort of works the same way for small presses. And yes, some of the editors are on Manuscript Wishlist, but not all of them. And it's weirdly hard to navigate the agents, uh, the editors on Manuscript Wishlist. But uh, AuthorPublish.com does have lists of uh, small presses that accept books without an agent. But they're really hard to navigate. Like, because so many of them are very, very specific, you'll get, like, a list of 40 uh, fantasy publishers, and maybe two of them would be interested in my book? And, like, that's very different of when I go to, like, Manuscript Wishlist and search fantasy agents, and I'll get, like, on a page of 10, I'll be able to query, like, half of them. Uh, I won't always choose to, because some of them I'm like, eh, they might fit, but not really. But it just makes it a lot harder to find small presses. Uh, also, the turnaround is a lot slower. Most of the small presses and publishers I've looked at either accept huge chunks of your book with your submission, like you're sending the first half, or they go ahead and accept the full manuscript with your submission. And that means that they're doing a lot more in-depth reading. And I like that in many ways, because I've long said my books are good, my queries are bad. And if I could just get people to just scan past the query and pick up the damn book, they'll love it. And so this should be good for me, but it does mean a lot longer of turnaround, because objectively it takes more time to read the first 50 pages of a book and decide whether you like it or not than it takes to read, you know, a one-page query. Uh, also on that note, there are a lot more small presses that do not accept simultaneous submissions than agents. And uh, simultaneous submissions are when you're sending the same manuscript to multiple different places. And if you have a six-month waiting period, if you're choosing to send it to someone that does not accept any other simultaneous submissions, that means you can't send it to anyone else for that six months. It might be six months before you can send it to anyone else, which sucks. Uh, so I tend to skip ones that are no simultaneous submissions. Uh, it's also, it just feels like there's a higher possibility of me falling for a scam when I'm looking at uh, publishers than agents. And that's not saying there are more publishers who are scams than agents, but just because there are so many specific networks that tell you about all the agents and it's not so clear on publishers, feels like it. And there have been a few that I've gotten really excited about until I realized they're basically hybrid publishers. And I'm not one of those people that's going to tell you that all hybrid publishers are scams. I don't think they are. As long as they're upfront with what they're giving you, that's not a scam. It's just, it may not be the choice you want to make. And a lot of them are not the choice I want to make. Like, there was one that I was really interested in. They covered my genre. They looked fun. They're brand new, so I feel like they're more likely to uh, be willing to look at a brand new author. But I chose not to query them in the end because looking at their webpage, I figured out that they expect their authors to pay for the editor and the cover artist. 
And like, they'll set you up with the right one. They'll help you make the connections, but you gotta pay. So basically, uh, what they are doing for you is jumping through all the hoops and getting your books into markets. And yeah, that's part of what I want from a traditional publishing deal. It's not the most of it. Most of it is I can't afford to buy an editor and an, a cover artist. Like, if I'm gonna do that, I might as well self-publish. On that note, once again, I have uh, heavily thought about self-publishing. Uh, if you spend some time on author spaces on social media, you will almost be forced to think about it a lot. But I am seriously considering it at this point. Because, I mean, my god, it's been a decade of me querying and I still haven't gotten anywhere. And while, yes, I have met authors on social media who have queried for more than a decade and finally got a book deal afterwards, but it does sound more straightforward to just self-publish. But I'm still held back by the same thing that always ends up holding me back in the end. Money. I don't have a couple thousand dollars to throw at getting published. And like, yeah, you technically can publish with no money, but as I've discussed in other videos, just because your book is published doesn't mean it's going to get in front of audiences. And like, I do want to, the two things that I like really in, insist on including in a budget if I'm going to self-publish is an editor and a cover artist. And I'm getting a bit wishy-washy on the editor. There is somebody that I have picked out that they are the person that I want to be my editor if I can ever find the money. I like them as a human being. I like what they've shown of their editing skills online. They're definitely the person I want. And like they're in a price range that sounds logical to me, but I just don't have the money. And, like, I've talked to other people who are like, Elaine, you are good at editing. You might not need to pay for an editor. Like, it would be great if you could. You might not need to. And so, in the end, the only thing that I'm like, no, really, I want to pay for a good quality version is a cover. And, like, yeah, you can get covers online for as low as $100, but I... Most of the ones I see don't look super professional. And are not specific. And yeah, I do want a cover that's specific to my book, that is commissioned for my book, and that looks professional. And yeah, a lot of times that does mean $900, $1,000, $2,000, and I just don't have that money I can spend. Especially not with no guarantee it will come back to me. Because like, it is an investment, and it's an investment that you don't have a huge chance of getting back. And like, uh, I would like to pay for marketing if I self-published, because I know it's hard to believe this is not a vanity project for me. I don't just want my name on a book, I want this to be a career. Which means I need people to read my books. And this is also why uh, I have been focusing a bit more on building a social media platform. Because, yeah, I do feel like if I have a certain number of followers on threads, YouTube, TikTok, etc., those are eyes I can get my book in front of. And once again, I feel like my books are good enough quality that if I can just get people to read them, the quality will see me through. People will say, hey, these are good books, you should read these books. And that's what you need to get your books out there. But... I'm not sure I'm at that number on any social media platforms as of now. And I certainly don't have money to spend on marketing. Uh, and like, when I do get money, like, there's so many things that are just like, life things that I need to buy first. I need to pay back a loan to my sisters. I need to buy a fucking dryer. I really would like to move. And I can't afford to do any of these things. So when I do come into a little bit of spare cash, I will admit publishing's not the first thing that comes to my mind, and I want it to be, but it can't be. So, uh, once again, self-publishing is on the back burner. Like, it is still a possibility for me. I still am willing to try it if I just had a couple thousand dollars to spend. On that note, the one thing I have been putting a lot of focus on right now is social media. Uh, I started trying to build a platform on social media was primarily because I had read so many articles saying you needed one to get published, like agents won't look at you without a social media platform. And uh, more and more I'm seeing people deny that and say that's not true at all. It may be true for nonfiction, it's definitely not true for fiction, but I can't shake the feeling it's helpful. 
Uh, I have seen a couple people insist that it's actually detrimental because that means that you can be cancelled at any time and no agent will accept you if you can be cancelled at any time and I don't think that's true. Uh, and if nothing else, I just saw someone published a chart showing that roughly 20% of debut authors that got deals between April and August of this year had no connections whatsoever and everybody else either had a platform, they had connections to the literary industry, they had an MFA and were connected to literary journals, uh, they were journalists, they were, uh, you know, celebrities, everybody else had an in. So I'm like, uh, I feel like social media is the only one of those I could possibly magically get. Uh, but also there are good things to social media, like I've made connections, I finally have author friends! And admittedly they're all online friends and proving my brilliant networking skills, the ones that I'm closest to, the ones that I'm like, we are friends! Are usually the ones that are struggling to get published. A few of them are indie published and are just like, you know, barely getting any readers. And I'm like, Cool, but that being said, I have uh, made some connections with actually, like, traditionally published authors who sell relatively well, uh, and, like, some of them, I've seen ads for their books on Facebook, I've seen their books in real bookstores, it's pretty cool, and a couple of them were kind enough to even, like, look at my query for me. Now, annoyingly, uh, they all had diametrically opposite feelings about what needed to be changed about my query letter, but <laughs> they were trying, it was helpful. Uh, I also have thought about next time that I get a book ready for publishing, I think I'm gonna put an offer out there on social media, and specifically threads, to be like, hey, indie authors, uh, people trying for trad publishing, anyone who wants to do a deal with me, I'm willing to read your book, give you feedback, and you do the same for me, like normal critique partner kind of thing, but with the addition of, I'll write a blurb for you if you write a blurb for me. Like, just give me a quick synopsis, a query letter kind of blurb, and I'll do the same for you. Because, like, I feel like what I lack is the outsider perspective on my book as to what makes it different and sellable. So uh, I don't think I would take that blurb and just go, okay, this is what I'm going for, this is what I'm putting in my query letter, but it would give me a place to jump off from, and I feel like it might be really helpful. And a couple people have seemed vaguely interested, so all I gotta do is get a book ready and hopefully we can do this. Uh, but on the other side of that, social media is a huge time and energy suck. Like, oh my god, I used to have so much more time for writing before I started doing social media stuff. And like, I'm only really focusing on two platforms, YouTube and Threads, and still it feels like half of my writing time goes to trying to think of things to say on social media. But it's more than that, because like, if you want to really build a platform and build a community, which is what's actually useful on social media, then you are having to not just post one thing a night and then move on. Like, that's fine for YouTube because YouTube is a, you know, a speaking platform, less a connection building thing. But uh, on places like Threads, if you want to get your shit seen, you have to post three or four, maybe even five or six times a night. You need to go and comment on other people's posts. You need to reply to comments on your own posts. And all of that takes time. Like, there are nights that I spend, like, hours literally just scrolling through looking for any post that I have cogent, coherent thoughts about that are not incredibly obvious, have not been stated a hundred times, and aren't, like, fighting with somebody. Because, like, I don't want to try to build a community on fighting with folks, because that's not how you build a community. And on that note, I do feel like I should warn you, if you are on social media, you will find a lot of people who seem to be commenting on your posts that almost feel like they are have, like, it almost feels like they're literally just walking into a room and saying, I too have things to say, and walking out. And that's because the algorithm pushes you to do this. Uh, there's also constant cyclical drama, like, you will have the same fights with people at least once every two or three months. Like, I've been on threads for about a year now, and I think we've had the does romance need a happily ever after argument, five or six times, uh, the our reviewers allowed to tag authors once, like three or maybe only three or four times, the should authors ever review books at least 
four times, and it's like, oh my god, we've discussed this. And the first time these dramas come up, it's sort of fun, because you're like, oh my god, something I can talk about that I have feelings on. Great! And then by the fourth time, you're like, I have exhausted every nuanced thought that I have. There's also just a lack of nuance on social media. Most of these platforms, you know, push you to make short, quippy statements, and that doesn't help add nuance. Uh, there's constant unrequested advice, and if you're somebody that annoys, be prepared. It's perpetual. Uh, there is a constant deluge of people doing better than you, people complaining about how badly they are doing, and people who are doing better than you and complaining about how badly they're doing. Uh, you should also be prepared to be constantly inundated with people telling you that everything you're doing is wrong. And sometimes it's direct comments on your posts. Sometimes it's just, you know, you're scrolling past and you see someone being like, oh my god, why would anyone write in third person? Third person is terrible. And you're like, half of all books are written in third person. Get over yourself. But it's just part of social media. But beyond all this, I still feel that social media can be an asset. It is possible that it will get you in the right place at the right time. And I don't mean that I think randomly an agent's going to see one of my posts one day and be like, I want to publish that person. I'm going to sign a contract with you and I have an editor who will be interested in your book immediately. Like, I, I dream of that happening, but I don't think it will. Uh, but it allows me to see where the market's at. Like, I can tell you that mermaid books are becoming a trend, and that's really useful because I'm writing a book right now that includes merfolk. Now, do I think I will have mine written and ready to be sent off to agents in time to hit the trend? No, I'm not quick enough of, a, of an author. But it can tell me, like, what is selling and what isn't. It can also, like, I've learned a lot about how agents' minds work from following agents on threads, and most of them don't talk much about being agents, because it's way too easy for them to say the wrong thing and cause a stir. But little things do pop up and make me go, okay, that's interesting to know. Uh, but also, yeah, if you get famous enough, on social media, which I don't think I will, but if I were to magically go viral and, like, become a major TikToker, for example, I probably would get a book deal. Uh, but uh, the biggest thing is everyone agrees, both whether you're trad public, whether you're with a small publisher, whether you're indie published, whether you're self-published, you're gonna have to be doing a good bit of marketing yourself if you want your book to get anywhere. And objectively, yeah, I have 3,000 followers on threads at this point? Do I think all of them are actual followers and not bots? No, probably about half of them are bots. But that still is at least a thousand people who might see that I have a book and be willing to buy it. I know that because I've shown them this one. Uh, yes, I did self-publish Drunks of the French Quarter Theater. I think I've told y'all about this. Uh, but I did it partially to see how many I could sell and not many. Uh, I still have not even made it back the money I spent on publishing that, and I did not pay for a cover artist or anything for that book. So that's a good sign. And so, yeah, I do think in many ways social media can be an asset, but it's also a shit show. So if you're going to follow that path, be prepared. Is there a part of me that really wishes I could go back to two years ago before I found social media for authors and just continue writing quietly on my own and just wondering what's wrong instead of knowing half of what's wrong? Yeah, I sort of really wish I could. Like, it'd be so much nicer. I got so much more writing done. But there's no denying that was getting me nowhere. And at least now, I do have author friends. I've made connections. I'm getting somewhere. These might not actually be steps towards my goal, but they are steps. Yes, I might be just walking up a down escalator, but at least I'm walking. Other than that, the only thing I have to update y'all on is I am writing a new book. Uh, it does include merfolk and wizards. Uh, for a brief minute there, it was looking a bit like Swiss Family Robinson or Robinson Crusoe, but with magic, which is a problem because I do not like Robinson Crusoe. But uh, I'm happy just because I'm writing. I've been struggling for the last year to keep any projects moving, like everything just stagnates and falls to nothing, and I know it's a self-esteem issue, I know that I'm losing faith in everything I'm writing, and that makes it really hard to write. But this project, it's moving, I've gotten to the doldrums of halfway, but it doesn't feel like it's dead, and it, I really like it! I feel like this is something I can shape into a sellable book! So I'm really hopeful. 
Uh, I also last year wrote a, a little novella, basically, and it felt incomplete. Like, it did not feel like the ending was quite the ending. And I want to go back and look at it some more, but I think it actually might be more complete than I thought it was. Like, I feel like with fresh eyes, I might see where it needs to go. And if I chose anything to self-publish, this is the one I'm going to choose. Uh, partially because it's just on the forefront of my mind, but also because it's a novella. It's a lot shorter than anything I've ever written, which means it would be cheaper to produce, cheaper to get professionally edited, and formatting is going to take me a hell of a lot less time because it's shorter, and it's just something that I feel like might be a good entry into actual self-publishing. Uh, but I do want to, of course, take the time to go back and look at it, make sure it does feel complete and that I'm happy about it, but I'm not really going to focus on that until I have the money to possibly self-publish something, because I don't really feel like polishing up a gem that I'm just going to set on a back shelf at the moment. Uh, I could also try querying this one, but I'm moving forward with what I'm writing right now instead, just to focus on that, because I want to get another book complete. Uh, I do have a short story that got published in a collection. Uh, it was called Dead Girls Walking, and I was not as happy about it as I wanted to be because uh, partially it's not a paid thing. Like, I didn't get paid for being in that uh, that collection, so it does not exactly feel professional. Also, I will admit the email they sent when they sent the acceptance felt like they were saying, we accepted everyone. I'm like, thanks for ruining the vibes. Uh, but I got it and I read it and, like, there are a lot of good stories in there that I feel happy to see my work beside. Uh, there are some that I didn't like as much, but uh, whatever. Uh, and, of course, I do have Drunks of the French Quarter Theater available everywhere on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, whatever. Uh, and, like, it's so narrowly focused that I'm not sure it is a good example of how many books I would sell if I self-published. Because it's something very specific. And fantasy novels are a little bit more broader market than a tourism book about New Orleans. At least, if nothing else, getting published in that uh, anthology gives me something else I can put on my query letter to say, look, someone else, somewhere, other than me, thinks my writing is good. Don't you want to read my books? Uh, but yeah, that's where I am in my publishing journey. Not that different from last year. Oh well. <laughs>